Hello, hello, hello. Rightio. <laughs> the greatest conspiracy of all. Mm. It's a big statement, Maurice. What are you going to talk about today? Well, I think at this moment in time with COVID pandemic, lots of unrest happening within the world. Jason, how are you? Uh, I really wanted to just share some, I guess, some insights around what this life is about. And, hey Deb, how are you? So, for some of you who are going to watch this, some of you who are watching this now, uh, this will totally make sense for you. For other people, this will be maybe a bit too out there for you as well, because I'm going to talk about some esoteric concepts. And esoteric, in a sense, is um, deep knowledge, ancient knowledge, but it's also related to, and I think that inherently everybody knows this, everyone feels it, they just don't necessarily know how to speak of it with people as well. Yes, it is. Life is but a dream. Hello, Trish. So, what I want to talk about is the greatest conspiracy of all is that you are powerless. <laughs> we live in a society where we think we have freedom of choice. However, there's so many rules, reg regulations, um, and I understand that we need these within our societies, and I'm certainly not talking about that. But we're also taught from a very young age within our education at school and even through our parenting, and this goes back you know, thousands of years, this isn't just something that's happened in the last hundred years or anything like that. But we're taught that our success and our happiness is external to us. Um, we're taught that when I get something, when I achieve something, um, when I get something material or when I'm with another person or I have a particular partner, that's when I'll then feel this experience of happiness and oneness and, you know, I now I'm in love, that sort of thing. Now, you can get that in your experiences with others, but ultimately it's your experience. However, we're, we're very much brainwashed to think that our happiness lies outside of ourselves and then we go seeking. And through that, um, we then fall prey to the egoic mind as well. And this is the biggest conspiracy, is that um, you are not your mind, that your mind is a part of you, okay? That you are soul, you are spirit, you are consciousness that comes into this physical life, time, for a particular experience. And the experience is for spiritual evolution. This is about you as consciousness. This is about you as spirit. This is the essence of you. And I've got a couple of videos out. I'll put a link in below this one that talks about you are consciousness having a human experience. And I don't need to go through the whole, um, the whole conversation of that, but I will touch on it briefly though. And that, you know, physically, you're made of over 70 trillion cells. Um, 300 million of your cells expire each and every moment. So physically, you are not the same person that you were when you first started this video, okay? So you're constantly in a flux of change. There's only one part of you that exists from the time that you're born to the time that you die, and that is the retina of your eye, which I find really interesting because that's the way that we see life. We perceive life through our, through our senses, but primarily through our sight. So you can't necessarily identify yourself as the one thing that sits with you from the time that you're born to the time that you die. You don't go around saying, hi, I'm Maurice, I'm the retina of my eye. But yet we introduce ourselves as this body. And this body is really, really important because it allows us to move around in this density of experience. The mind is really, really important because the mind allows consciousness 
to perceive life. So the mind is this vehicle of perception. But ultimately, the I that I'm talking about is the eternal part of you that will continue to exist when you cease living in this physical body. Now, for some of you, that may not necessarily be a belief, and that's quite okay. And this might challenge you, and you might turn it off now, and that's quite okay. For others of you, you might be saying, yeah, man, I'm totally with you, totally with you on this one. For others of you, you might say, I've sort of got an inkling about that, but I'm just not too sure. I'm not too sure who to talk to about it. I'm not too sure where to get information about it. And I'm not really too sure about how, how this is my truth. So I'm just going to share with you my truth, which is very similar to many other people's truths across the globe. And it's a really interesting time at this moment in time within our world that there's so much separation that's occurring so much racism there's you know um, there's the there's the perpetrator okay but be careful when you create a perpetrator of somebody you then turn yourself into the victim because the victim and the perpetrator are in essence opposite sides of the coin and they are a dualistic way of looking at life too Whenever there's a victim and a perpetrator, there will be guilt associated to it. There is, I am the guilty one because I'm the perpetrator. Or someone else would be guilty because they've done something to me. So that's all part of the egoic mind. Okay, and remember you are not your mind. So what I wanted to really say to you today is that We have fallen trap to believing governments, even health systems, that we are powerless. So now I've been told that my happiness lies within something else. My success lies within something else. And what happens then is I go out and I, I seek externalize or externalisms to find something within myself if I then feel you know a bit of anxiety and a bit of depression then I go and see a doctor and then they go and give me a pill and that pill is really interesting because all it does is release neurochemicals that you've already got in your system anyway you know that you can release those neurochemicals just by thought alone that's how powerful you are so we've been taught through Big Pharma, there's a conspiracy for you, and it's not necessarily a conspiracy, it's just a way, you know. We've been taught by Big Pharma that uh, a pill will change your mental health. Now, I'm certainly not knocking the medical system here. If I have a trauma that happens to my body, I'm certainly gonna to go to ED and they're gonna fix me up and I'm gonna be very grateful for it. And there's medication that can bring me back to homeostasis. And, you know, we can get IVs in and, you know, IVABs, all that sort of stuff. And so that's going to help me. So I'm certainly not knocking that. But what I am asking you to question is that you are so powerful that you can heal self. You can create through your perception hell on earth or heaven on earth that you have a beautiful energy system that exists within you called the chakra system that is tapping into consciousness the unlocalized form of consciousness you are a localized form of consciousness and you are ultimately a vehicle of love if you see yourself as that and where there is love, there is unity. However, where there is separation, then you are falling to the traps of the mind, the egoic mind. We've lost our way. 
we truly have lost our way. Because over thousands of years, we've been told this. And this comes back to slavery thousands of years ago. It comes back to the elites. And when I talk about the elites, I'm not talking about you know, this conspiracy type theory of these, these particular people. I'm just talking about that particular people at a particular time had this knowledge that we were eternal, or that we are eternal, that we are soul, and that we come to this plane of existence to have an experience so we can evolve spiritually. And we have all of this power and knowledge within us. However, those particular people, those particular souls at that particular time, were more so gravitating to service to self rather than service to others. When I am more service to self, then what I want to do is I want to have power over others. And what's the best way to have power over others is to spin a story that you are powerless internally and then all of your power comes from your external. And this is a story that we've been told that's been spun for many, many years, thousands of years. And I'm even going to say through many civilizations. Now, some of you might switch off here and that's okay. But this life is one of many. This physical experience that we call three-dimensional, that we call Earth, this body type of experience, is one of many densities within the universe. And it's really interesting that we come here for a very short period of time to awaken. You know, our average lifespan is about 82 to 85 years of age, depending if you're a male or a female. That only equates to about 30,000 days or a little bit more. That's not really a long time to become spiritually aware of what you are. Okay? However, you, know, you might ask, well, Maurice, if we've had all of these lifetimes before, how come I can't remember them? Well, some people can. Some people are becoming more and more aware of that at the moment. When we come into this existence, we have what we call a veil of forgetting. So we forget our past lives, our past experiences. And the reason why we have this veil of forgetting is so we can have an authentic experience within this dimension, this density. This density is one of the greatest learning opportunities that we have as soul. It's been likened to one of the most intense experiences that soul can ever have to grow. Now what I mean by that is that within this density of experience, the way that soul evolves through its experiences is through psychological suffering. <laughs> and you think to yourself, Maurice, why would you sign up for that? And see, the interesting thing is that to come into this plane of existence, you as soul have already decided this is where you want to be. It'd be like, you know, we know that if we go to university and we want to become a doctor, We've got at least six years. And then you've got all of the other years that then come from that. Imagine if somebody said to you, you can become a doctor within 18 months. But it's going to be a really intense ride. You're going to have to study hard. You're always going to be under pressure. Um, particular times you're going to fail. You're going to be stressed. All of that stuff. But you're going to get great rewards from it. And this is what this existence is about. You've got 82 years on the planet if we make it that far. And you're going to experience a thing called psychological suffering because you have a mind within a body that is used to perceive the world. But that mind runs a particular program that will keep you alive. And it will also separate you from others 
because that part of the mind, the part of the mind that has the programming, sees itself as the one that experiences life, when in actual fact, it's consciousness. You are consciousness, experiencing life through the mind. <laughs> the biggest awakening that you come here to experience is to realise that you are not the body, you are not the mind, that those things are a part of this experience, that you are ultimately consciousness. And when you then start to realise that is what you are, that's when you can then start to let go of suffering because the suffering happens from the mind. In saying that, Suffering is an illusion. Whoa, hey, I'm going to lose a lot of people here, Maurice. I've had this trauma. How can you say that that's an illusion? You know, I think you're full of shit now. I'm not saying that. It's the attachment to the mind in relation to what has happened to you within your world that creates the story of what that means. Now, if you could come to an understanding that all of the experiences that you've had with all of the people that you've had, they have been soul contracts. There's an agreement prior to coming into this existence that you will have an experience with a particular, with another soul, another self, that will lead to an experience that you can then grow from, that you can awaken from. And as my friend Jason said before, life is but a dream. So now's the time to start to awaken from this dream. This dream that you think that you are separate from others. This dream that suggests that you are a body with a mind and that's all that you are. To awaken to the understanding you are consciousness having a human experience. This is a human experience. You will have this experience for a short period of time, 82 years, if we make it that far. And then you will then transition from this body and go back to what you have always been, which is non-physical consciousness. Now, the question might be, Maurice, what about all of these bad people on the planet doing all of these horrendous things? which I can then easily get caught up and separate myself from. But the beautiful thing about life is that consciousness is neutral in nature. That the unlocalised form of consciousness, which is what we call the universe, is expanding each and every moment via the experiences that we have. And, you know... Our freedom of choice actually comes from a consciousness perspective. And that is that I can choose to have my experience. As I'm choosing to share this experience with you, you can choose not to listen to it. You can choose to align with it. You can choose to consider it. You can choose to reject it. But that's your experience. Now, each and every one of us is having our own experience. Each one of those experiences is as valuable as any other experience. Just know that if you allow yourself to listen to the inner voice, listen to the intuition, you will be able to connect to the deeper part of you, the eternal part of you. And when you find that place, that space, that's where peace and love reside. And that's ultimately what you are. If I could only see through the eyes of love in every interaction that I have with others, I can then see through the illusion of Maya through the illusion of the brainwashing, 
through the illusion of this concept that I am this physical body with a mind. And I then start to come closer to what it is that I am. And for me at the moment, I feel that right in this heart space. It's just a beautiful space. It's absolutely beautiful space. And that's where you then become the calm and the chaos. The chaotic world that we look at, if we listen to the news each and every day, we wouldn't really want to step out our door. We wouldn't want to engage in this world. We wouldn't want to invite young people into this world. We wouldn't want to invite other souls into this world, but yet other souls are turning up each and every day. I have a grandson who now is four months old and he's a beautiful, beautiful soul. He has agreed to come into this space. He has agreements with my daughter and her partner. He has agreements with many other souls that will be placed upon his path, that will show him an experience that he can then learn from. And that experience will be catalyst for spiritual awakening, spiritual growth. So if you're getting caught up in the world at the moment and it being so negative and a world that you really don't want to live in, start to see it from the eyes of love that each and every person, each and every soul, each and every other self is having their own experience. And that experience has been a part of an agreement that they have had with all of the other selves that they are experiencing life with. Hey, Katie. When you start to come from that understanding, then you start to see that there is love through every action. Even though it might seem heinous and you can't understand it, from soul's perspective, it's an ontological perspective, it's a broader perspective. I get to see it from soul's perspective. I have a greater compassion and empathy and love for everything that is happening upon this earth. Now, that doesn't mean that if somebody comes to try and attack me, I'm not going to defend myself and say, hey, it's okay, I'm in love. I'm certainly going to defend myself. And I will defend my family. However, if I was to pass, I don't cease to exist because I am aware that I am eternal. And eternal is forever. Forever is something that the mind can't really fully comprehend. You know, well, forever, that's a long time. No, it's not a long time. Time doesn't exist in forever. Eternity doesn't, time doesn't exist in eternity. You are constantly living in this eternal flow of nows. And this is, this is where we exist. We're constantly in the now. We have never shifted out of the now. And now is where you find eternity. Now is where you find the understanding that you are consciousness having a human experience because you've never been out of that now. Even the time that you will pass, you'll still be in the now. The time that you were born, you were in the now. So I would invite you to consider these musings that I've shared with you because it's important to become aware of beliefs and thought processes that are far beyond what we have been taught, far beyond what we take to be our truth. And like I said, for many of you, you will totally resonate with this. With others, you will consider it. And for the other people who don't disagree with me, they probably checked out 10 minutes ago, whenever it was. It's important to become aware of this stuff. It's important to become awake. Now is the time for awakening. And for those of you that are awake, there is great opportunity for insights, awakenings, downloads that are happening right at this moment and have been happening for really for the last, well, they're happening all of the time, but 
it's about becoming... So I sat in meditation the other day and what I received within meditation. So notice what I received. So to be in a state of meditation, to open the heart, to be in the space of love and peace, that's where you will then receive insights. That's where you will then receive the information that you need. And this is happening all around the world for every other soul. Now, the beautiful thing about what I'm speaking about here is that I don't have to go out and I don't have to go out and protest. I don't have to go out and I don't have to cause separation. What I do is that I sit within, I do my inner work. What it is that I become, what it is that I am, the space of peace that I hold, the connection to love that I have, is then placed on what they call the quantum field. Carl Jung would call it the accumulative unconscious. And I then add to that. People can then access what I have added to it as I am accessing what you're experiencing as well because we're all one. You are another self. You are a fractal of the same that I am. There is no separation between you and I. I have my own unique soul print but it is no different to your own unique soul print and we are all part of the one. What we need to hear in these days is conversations that unite people, that unify people, not separate people. So to move forward and take this out into our world, have conversations with people that bring people together. Don't gossip about people, that's separation. And anyway, when you judge others, you're judging that part of yourself anyway. So you're creating separation, further separation within self. So have these beautiful unifying conversations. Find people that align with what you're thinking and what you're believing. And strum the guitar, strum the chord of that frequency. Do the inner work. Sit in meditation, sit in silence, sit in peace and experience the love that you are. And that will then be placed upon the field. Now, I want to leave you with one very powerful, very, very powerful three lines. And this comes out of Course of Miracles. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. And it says, nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. Now, I am not a person who likes to say the word God until I then come to the understanding of the one, the universe, the creator, the one before all of this, the one that I am a part of. But nothing unreal exists, and that's where I then talk about the illusion, because other than love, everything is an illusion. It creates a separation. So I encourage you to start to see yourself as this beautiful vehicle of love and then ask, how can I share this with others through compassion, through forgiveness, all of those beautiful things. That's me for today. I just wanted to share that with you because we've got so much stuff out there that is geared towards separation. It's geared towards fear. Whereas I want to unite and I want to bring you to the understanding that you are consciousness having a human experience. And even if you were to pass, that doesn't mean that you stop existing. 
we're all going to pass one day. And the thing is, we don't know when that is. We think we're immortal, but we're aware of our mortality. But we avoid those conversations. And we avoid the conversations because ultimately, we then start to realise that I need to then search within me. When you start to search within you and ask, you, ask yourself these questions, what am I? You will ultimately come to this point that I am speaking of. So, I want to share that with you today, because that's where I am. You can either contact me physically, or you can contact me non-physically. I'll get the message either way. Anyway, have a beautiful day. My love goes out to you, my other self. Okay? And just remember your brilliance, your power, your... your universal adversiality. I don't know if that's a word. Anyway, all right. Thank you very much. Leave a comment if you want. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you, Lindell. Thank you, Hayley, Jan, Katie, Jason, if you're still on too. So have a beautiful day. My love is with you as, as we are all love. And um, yeah. Just go and shine it. Shine it into your day and you will get it back tenfold. All right. Goodbye.